Hi, everyone. Welcome and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone and everyone out here. Well, let me introduce myself. I'm Lucina Victor. I work as Learning and Development Manager at Encora India. So today, let me introduce, I have an honor to introduce our speaker, that's Aditya. When I talk about Aditya, just when I was going through a couple of, you know, quotes, I just came across this uh, uh, one good thing. I don't know whether Aditya would love this, but I would like to quote this. Technology by itself doesn't make leaders. Technology only amplify, amplifies to, true leadership. That's something came to my mind. He's always been constantly, he understands the needs of the client and always provides the best solution, not only to the technical, even to the non-technical people around him. He's not first time hosting this Encora um, Developer Week. He's been hosted the first Encora Developer Week in 2022, demystifying Oath. And that's the first uh, Developer Week that he has hosted. So about Aditya, if I talk about, he is an MIS graduate with 13 years of industry experience in designing, development, cloud-based uh, web application. Currently, Aditya, he is working as an engineering manager at Encora as part of his, he provides technical assistance to multiple engineering teams at Encora. He drives and delivers of multiple business initiatives by working closely with product and business on client side. And something great about Aditya is he loves to speak and write about technology. Technology, technology is what he loves. And he's, I'm really happy to say that he's one of our Encora's innovation leader, leading cloud service with expertise in Azure. So today his topic, he's gonna talk about implementation of single sign off on using Azure Active Directory. Well, before I could hand over the floor to Aditya, I would like you guys to know that you can follow us in our social media appearing on the screen. This session is part of Global Developer Week organized by Encora. Thank you so much. And the floor is all yours, Aditya. Hey, thanks, Lucina. Thanks for the lovely introduction, uh, detailed one, I would say. Uh, Okay, hey everyone. So, topic for this talk is uh, implementing single sign-on in enterprise applications using Azure Active Directory as identity provider. I have divided this talk into three sections. In the first section, we are going to see what is single sign-on, advantages of single sign-on, and types of single sign-on. Uh, next, we have uh, web-based SSO protocol. So, there are two very popular protocols, SAML and OpenID Connect. We are going to see what these protocols are and few common terminologies used in OpenID Connect. In the last section, we have a process, like how to implement single sign-on using Azure Active Directory as an identity provider. And we're going to use OpenID Connect as an SSO protocol for that implementation. Cool. Uh, let's begin. So a single sign-on, I mean, uh, in layman terms, if you uh, ask me like, what is single sign-on, so in layman terms, it's authentication process which allows users to access multiple applications. And you just need to log in once. So uh, very simple, like log in once and then you can access multiple apps and resources. In our day-to-day -day life, we keep on using it. Uh, like if you can see on my screen, I have a screenshot from my from my Outlook. So just with my Microsoft Encora credentials, I log into Outlook and I can access all the other Microsoft suite of applications, including Word, OneDrive, SharePoint, PowerPoint, Teams, and so on. Same goes for Google. Like even Google has implemented uh, single sign-on on enterprise level. So if I am logged into my Gmail account, my, with, using my Gmail credentials, I can access Google Search, Google Maps, YouTube, Google Meet, and so on. So you see, with just one set of credentials, I am able to access multiple applications. So this is single sign-on. Now let's talk about different types of single sign-on. So uh, we have enterprise-based single sign-on, the one which we implement in organizations, and then we have web-based single sign-on. Biometric single sign-on, as in uh, if you're using your fingerprints, scan, fingerprints, iris scanning, or facial recognition for authentication, and then you can access multiple resources behind the scene. That is like biometric single sign-on. We have federated single sign-on, where you are delegating your uh, authentication and authorization to a third party or a, to an identity provider. Then uh, we have social single sign-on, mobile, and, and so on. So these are a few different types. 
for this uh, presentation we are mainly going to focus on web based single sign on and uh, there's something special about web based single sign on because web as we know it works on http that is hypertext transfer protocol and it's a stateless protocol so uh, if two parties are communicating on web then uh, the subsequent request it, it is stateless as in if a request was sent from client to a server so the second request uh, they will have uh, the client will have to prove the identity again because server won't remember what who this client was so that is where the web based single sign on is uh, there are different protocols which are used uh, and how it operates uh, more on that we are going to see in upcoming slides uh, let's talk about advantages of single sign on so you can see on my screen i have divided it into two parts uh, left side is user centric right side is system centric uh, let's talk from users perspective so of course if uh, if you implement single sign on it is it will give better user experience and it is very convenient for user because that workflow is very seamless uh, think about you are you have your outlook open and you get a link in that uh, in, in your email that's a sharepoint link or maybe one drive link now if i have to if i click on that link and i will be navigated to a sharepoint link imagine the frustration that if i have to relog in or i have to give my credentials again and uh, again like uh, another use case would be that if there is a presentation attached they have to view that presentation right now if uh, since there is single sign on implemented it's very easy and very convenient for you because you just click on that link and behind the scene browser will do the login for you and that's a very seamless user experience so of course like if you talk about user centric uh, from users perspective it will always give you better user experience and convenience now let's talk from the other side so from system side uh, if you talk from systems point of view then of course like if you go with single sign on you are going to get centralized access control as in all your sort of applications would be controlled from one common entity that's called authorization server and you can do that all that authorization control from one place if uh, a employee leaves a company or if uh, your user of your application if uh, you have to delete or add any user you don't have to do that management on and different applications simply you can do it in one one source and then it it will reflect everywhere so that is a beauty here like you can control everything from one common point second uh, it's easy to integrate as in uh, uh, you have set 10 applications in your enterprise and you, if you have to add 11th application you don't have to worry about doing authentication and authorization for for this new application all ha you have to do is just delegate all this to uh your identity provider and then you can focus on the core functionality so uh, authentication and authorization would all would, would be taken care by uh, the existing infrastructure and you can solely focus on the core functionality of your application and on security i mean uh, we all know it like uh, if you can have multi factor authentication you can have biometrics involved so that way uh, all your application will be more secure since uh, you will have multi factor authentication and at steep, uh, each step that is that is levels of security would be more in this case okay uh, now let's talk about web based single sign on protocols as i said uh, uh, for rest of the presentation we are mainly going to when i say single sign on it's implicit i'm talking about web based single sign on so uh, these are the two very common protocols uh, saml and oidc saml uh, stands for security assertion markup language uh, saml based protocol and it's xml based conventional approach i would say i mean very very popular it was popular back uh, when uh, we were mainly having web applications so at that time uh, say you have three three parties involved here you have your client application you have your resource like a service provider and then you have a third third entity which is resource server where, uh, sorry authorization server where you are handling all your authentication and authorization so all the communication between these three entities uh, like information exchange and everything that uh, the underlying language uh, for all that communication is xml in, in saml and uh, it is very suitable for web applications once the client request for uh, provides the identity and in return authorization server is going uh, gives you like a assertion uh, again it's a xml document so uh, it to, just to simplify it like this whole saml it's a old and uh, very complex way of uh, implementing single sign on it uses xml as a base language on the other side we have open id connect open id connect is very popular and uh, unlike xml this one is 
uh, JWT and JSON based. So we all know JSON is a lightweight version if compared to XML. And again, token based authentication uh, is used in OpenID Connect. This is the modern approach for implementing single sign on and it has very strong ecosystem. Now, when I say strong ecosystem, what does it mean? So all the key players in uh, who provides this, uh, who are identity providers, Azure Active Directory, uh, Okta, and then you have Auth O, you have single sign in. Like all, all these identity providers, they, they provide, they actually recommend uh, using OpenID Connect instead of SAML. And, uh, uh, and again, all the popular languages and technologies which are in market right now, they also have very good documentation and uh, they are much, very much compatible with, with OpenID Connect, mainly because of the token base and, and JSON approach. And another important thing here is that SAML was just suitable for web applications, might not be a very good choice for mobile and single page applications, but OpenID Connect works well with, with almost all the types of applications. If compared to SAML, OpenID Connect is very flexible and it is extensible. Why? Because OpenID Connect is extension of OAuth, OAuth 2.0. Again, we will see it in upcoming slides, but for now, just think of it in this way that uh, with OAuth 2.0, you can have different flows. Like you can, based on your use case or your need, you can implement various flows of OAuth. So that flexibility is what we are getting in OpenID Connect. Cool. Uh, so let's see. Okay, uh, let, let's talk about what is OAuth in, in real time example. Before we deep dive into OpenID Connect, it is important to understand what is OAuth. So this is a real time example of, of OAuth as in, in general, like what is OAuth? OAuth is delegated authorization. Like if I have to delegate all my authorization to, to an identity provider, to a third party. Now in real time example, I as a, I'm, if I'm I want to check into a hotel room, I cannot simply walk into my room and start using the resources over there. I have to first go to reception. I have to provide my identity, and then in return, the receptionist is going to hand me over after validating my identity. They they will give me an access card. Now using that access card, now I can go and use the hotel room. So you see, in this in this example, we have three entities. Uh, I am the client application. Hotel room is the resource server, service provider, and reception here in this case is authorization server. So what hotel room did, it, it delegated all its authorization and authentication to this third party, which is, which is receptions. And I cannot directly access all the protected resources on room site because I need to have a valid key card. Key card here is called access token. So uh, this is what OAuth is. Now, Let's talk about what is OpenID Connect. OpenID Connect is, uh, you can think of it in this way that it is extension of OAuth 2.0. OAuth was all about authorization. Auth in OAuth stands for authorization, not for authentication. I mean, there is a ton of information online, uh, which is confusing and misleading, but always remember Auth in OAuth 2.0 stands for authorization. Now, what was happening? Like, OAuth 2.0 was very popular, and then all the key players, uh, they, they were there was a standard. Uh, if you have to use go for delegated authorization, you can implement over 2.0. But with time, uh, authentication was missing in uh, in over 2.0. And with time, what was happening? All all the players like Microsoft, Facebook, uh, Google, and uh, other other giants, they started doing their own implementation of identity, or they started they doing their own add-on for authentication on top of over 2.0, which was not good because uh, as an industry, there has to be a standard like uh, a protocol. So that is when OpenID Connect came into picture. OpenID Connect is an extension of OR 2.0, which focuses on the identification or authentication. So uh, as you can see in the diagram, like OR 2, uh, if you talk about OpenID Connect, you are, you are getting all these features of OR implicitly, like delegated authorization, resource server, identity provider, different flows we have. But in addition to OR 2.0, we are also getting two things here, identity token and user info API endpoint. Now, what is this identity token? Identity token here is like a JWT. So uh, this JWT uh, is a JSON-based web token, which will have users' information. It could be any information, like any unique identifier about the user. So name or email or anything. Now, once you have this uh, minimal information for user, that is either username or email, in case you want to fetch more details about that particular user, I, uh, all the OpenID Connect 
identity providers will always expose user info API endpoint. So what client application can do, they can use the identity token, they can make a REST API call to that identity provider, uh, and they can hit this user info API endpoint. In return, they are going to get more information about the user. So that more information could be like a picture of that particular user, or maybe departments, projects, and and so on. So uh, try to understand like identity identity token will con, uh, contain users information, the minimal information which will uniquely identify that user. It could be name, email, or any unique identifier. And if you want to fetch more details, you can always use identity token to make a REST API call and grab uh, more details. Cool. Uh, so now let's see a quick demo of uh, OpenID Connect. So what I'm trying to do here, I am trying to access my files which are there on one drive. Now you see uh, what is a URL here? Encora drive share point blah blah blah. So this this was original URL. URL and then just do a quick cleanup here. Okay, so you see the original request was sent for this to this URL. That was my SharePoint URL, but if you observe, uh, that URL was changed because we have single sign-on implemented here. So that request was changed to something else. The request went to Microsoft Identity Provider, Azure Active Directory. You can see the difference, login.microsoftonline.com. And behind the scene, we have OAuth also implemented. I told you, OpenID Connect is an extension of uh, uh, OAuth 2.0. So behind the scene protocol here is uh, over 2.0 and under scopes you will also yeah here it is you, in the scope you, will, you can always see this guy uh, open id so this you can play around like you can you can try different uh, combinations like this for instance if you do uh, any website and if you click on login with microsoft login with facebook and so on that url will change and that url will definitely look something like this now uh, let's try to see what 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 are these each, each of these parameters here. So this is the URL for my, this is the authorization endpoint on identity provider. Client ID is a unique identifier uh, which will, which differentiates uh, the client, like a unique identification for client. Response code is uh, basically like you can, uh, once the request goes to authorization server, in return, the client application is going to get something. Either it could be a token, it could be a code or anything. So response mode specifies that in what format, uh, in what mode you want that uh, response. If you want it in form of query params, you want it in form of JWT or you, uh, form post. So that uh, setting you need to specify here. Response type, again, uh, here you can see we have uh, response type and uh, it has code and ID token. So here we are saying that client is ex uh, setting up the expectation to authorization server that in return, I want code and identity token. Scope, I think uh, that's, that defines your level of access on, on your on the resource server. Nons and uh, I think there should be something in state. Yeah, there it is. So nons and state, these are two parameters which are uh, like nons is a, it's a unique number, number used only once. So this is added by client application to prevent uh, no replay attacks, replay attacks. And state is again, added like an arbitrary random value, which, which is added by the client application to prevent cross-site uh, CSR attacks. Uh, redirect URL, you have to specify redirect URL because if you observe, the control was navigated from browser, like from this URL to some, some other URL. So authorization server should know that once I get the valid response, where, where should I redirect the end user? Like where should I redirect? 
the user and browser. So that is why you need to specify the redirect URL. And this is same as Encora going to uh, share going to. So anyways, I mean, I was just trying to show like how Microsoft single sign-on uh, looks behind the scenes. Going back to our presentation. That. Okay, so I think these are the common terminologies we use in OpenID Connect. More or less, I think we have covered all these uh, in that example. Resource server or service provider is the API which stores the data which client wants to access. Access token with token with claim inside. I think uh, all these, most of the login hint was something which was not there, but the so login hint is like. If you have multiple uh, identity provider hosted on your authorization server, you specify a login hint uh, just to uh, just as an additional info that authorization server will figure out that which IDP uh, should I redirect this request to. And response mode, as we saw, like query, fragment, GWT, form post. In what mode do you want that response from authorization server? So I think we have already seen these terminologies. So I can skip this slide. Let's talk about different responses. So in the pre, in, in my example, uh, if you remember, there was something uh, response code, uh, and then here there I I had specified token and ident uh, code and identity token. So there I was specifying, right, uh, client was specifying to authorization server that in return I want code and identity token. So in that way, like there are four. For these are, I mean, there are of course there are more, but these are uh, four very popular different responses which we get from OpenID enabled identity provider. One is authorization. First is authorization code. Authorization code is used as an intermediary step, like uh, when you are implementing authorization code flow or 2.0 uh, grant flow. At that time, you your client application will not get identity token or access token in first step. That there is an intermediate step where client application will do a front channel communication, uh, make a call to authorization server. Authorization server is going to give you a temporary code. It's a short lived token or short lived code. And now, using this code, this client application is going to make a back channel communication to authorization server. And then it will get access token. So, you see, uh, there is an enhanced improved security because instead of exposing that access token directly to client application, there is a back channel communication also involved. And that is the beauty. Like here, you can have more security, and that that this is why authorization code flow is uh, most popular grant type in in over 2.0 and over 8. Next, we have access token. So of course, like once you uh, once you get your authorization code, second step is uh, that back channel communication where you use authorization code to make a REST API call to get access token. Access token is again a JWT which is used for authorization. And this this will have all the scopes, as in what all things this client application can access on resource server based on the claims which are defined in that access token. If I requested for uh, some information on resource server, or like if I uh, there might be multiple resources, there could be multiple APIs, multiple API endpoints. So that doesn't mean that uh, with one access token I can access everything. So that level of uh, access that is defined in an access token. That what all things you can access using this token. Third, we have identity token. So identity token is uh, mainly used for authentication, as I said, which, you are, which is uh, a byproduct of OpenID Connect. And this, this is a JWT token, which will carry users' identity and information. And as I said, at minimal, it will always have name, email, or some, some unique identification of that particular client. And if you want to access more about that uh, user, you can always make a REST API call to this and uh, user info API endpoint. And in return, you will get more information like picture, departments, projects, and, and other information if you want. And, uh, and last, we have four, like, uh, four type of response that is called refresh token. Now, refresh token is, uh, again, this is a long duration token. If you see in access token and identity token, I mean, I, I mentioned that these are short lived token because you cannot give them, you cannot, authorization server cannot hand over a token with like 60 minutes or uh, say 24 hours uh, time expiration. So they normally they are in minutes or maybe sometimes in seconds. Again, depends on your use cases. Like in case of banks, you might have uh, observed, like in, in banking, if you are on a banking website, you will 
end up your session say within seconds but if you are on an e-commerce website or a retail website there it might go on for minutes so again depending on uh, the business uh, the expiration time is set but in order to solve this problem there is a concept of refresh token the refresh token is uh, like a behind the scene uh, guy you can say so this refresh token is uh, used for renewing your access token it is a long duration uh, port token a long duration token and behind the scene your browser without informing user makes a call to authorization server and then using the refresh token uh, they can always get a new new access token with more expiration time so again it's a better user experience and uh, uh, again this is also the duration is de dependent on the, your, your use case uh, cool i think we are in the last section of uh, of the presentation so we are going to see how to implement single sign on using azure active directory so uh, let's see a problem statement. So here uh, I wanted to create an in-house application which will be used by all Encora folks. Again, a very simple Angular application making a call to .NET API uh, hosted on App Service. If I have to solve this problem by a conventional way, how how can I do it? There will be a registration module. There will be a login module. User will Encora employee will have to log in. Then their information would be saved in this database. Not very good approach. Why? Because I already have all Encora employees information present in, in Active Directory. So why would I want to expose, or why would I have to create a new subset of data here? So that's why uh, we should always try to solve this problem. Uh, this is the optimal solution. So here you can see I have implemented single sign-on using OpenID Connect. Encora employee will not get any option of registration or login. Instead, they will just see, uh, they will get login with Microsoft button on that application. They click on it. Then they will have to enter their Encora Microsoft credentials. Angular application or client application is going to take those credentials on, on uh, Azure Active Directory, validate it. In return, they will uh, get access and identity token. Now, since this Angular application has identity and access token, this application can use uh, those tokens to access the resources. So you see, in this whole thing, I have not. I'm not worried about authentication or authentication. This application can solely focus on the core functionality and all the, all the authentication and authorization part was delegated to this third party, which is Azure Active Directory. Uh, these are the steps for implementing single sign-on. I mean, uh, you can probably take a screenshot of this because this uh, we have three parties involved here, Azure Active Directory, Angular application, and .NET site. So I've tried to uh, give you a brief, like all, uh, basically it's a high level view, but these pointers can definitely help you in implementing uh, like what all code changes or what all things you need to do it in each application. As in like if you if you talk about Azure Active Directory, first you will have to register that Angular application and you have to register the .NET API. Uh, you will have to set few things like uh, fetching, uh, setting up the redirect URL, setting up the scopes and, and so on. And once you set up the scope and on API side, you, are, you have to link both. So you have to add that client application back to the Angular application. So I'm not going to uh, go deeper here, but I think you get an idea. As I said, take a screenshot of it, and of course, like you can uh, always refer it later. But uh, this is one uh, view for for all the changes you have to make. Uh, again, just a screenshot of all the Active Directory changes. So something similar. I mean, it's very similar to what we saw on the previous slide. It is just a uh, graphical uh, pictorial representation of what we saw here. Okay, uh, uh, con uh, conclusion, I, I mean, yeah, let's do a quick recap or refresh of all the concepts we saw. Single sign-on is a authentication process where you log in once, you can access multiple resources. It's always better from user's point of view because it gives you better user experience and can, it's very convenient for user. Better for system also because they can implement multi-factor multi authentication and they can control all of that from a central point. There are various types of single sign-on, uh, web-based, federated, social, and so on. Then there are, like we have SAML and OpenID Connect, two very popular web-based single sign-on protocols. SAML is a traditional way, OpenID Connect is a token, JWT-based, a modern approach. OpenID Connect uh, is a authentication layer built on top of OAuth 2.0. Then we have four different types of responses in OpenID Connect, access token, identity token, access code, refresh token, each one have their own significance. And then uh, we saw steps uh, like how to implement single sign-on using Azure Active Directory. Uh, you have three parties involved here and uh, what code changes and configuration you need to make at each place. That uh, detail you can check in that previous slide. 
okay uh, thank you and uh, thank you for joining this session and we do have very good uh, technical blogs on our encora website uh, on cloud and azure so you can definitely check check those if we even have case studies where we talk about using uh, such concepts like azure and single sign on and all for our clients so you can check check to uh, that that website for more details all right thank you thank you aditya for a great deep dive talk on how to implement sso using azure ad as an identified provider thank you all of all of you for a great time being here with us and i hope you enjoyed the talk with aditya please leave your comments and the comments would be delightfully answered by aditya here i would like to highlight here the next session is starting now remember to return to the official website review your agenda for the next session where you will enjoy the rest of the um, technical uh, uh, not the developer week sessions thank you so much and have a lovely time guys thank you Thank you.